Good morning, fans of Private TRFX. Coming at you on the Monday after non farms. Saudi Arabia going rogue with their little solo cut. Uh, this created some hysteria at the open in oil, which ended up to 75 bucks. Tidy little $3.40 move. Um, but I guess this was this is what happens when you go it alone. Um, right back, seventy-two, seventy-seven. So we're still a buck higher than the close on Friday. But um, here's oil. That shit's hard to trade, like for us. So we stay away from it for the most part. Uh, we often get it right directionally, but actually timing it is just eludes us somehow. Um, but here's oil. What does this say for the rest of everything? I don't know. Not too much. Dollar CAD's flatlined. <laughs> did nothing. Uh, literally did nothing. And with all that noise, uh, Aussie commodity driven currency, not doing too much either. So, I mean, if you were, if you were dialed in at the open, um, with oil, that could have been, that could have been fun. We we were not. We didn't trade it at all. Let's look at gold. This looks incredibly uh, oversold on what we thought was a mixed non-farms number. The one thing to note here is that um, 1985 um, or 1986, my sophomore year in high school, um, is a nice tidy level in gold. So if we get some dollar weakness or if we get some um, fear, this is this is a tidy place to buy gold. Uh, should you buy gold on the dip as well? I do think you should. We bought last week down uh, in the 30s. Are we gonna get through 1930 this week before we turn back higher? Maybe. Um, let's let's not let's not rule that out. Uh, it does look a little bit overdone, like that bar, as hysterically bearish as it is, cannot be ignored. But it does smack as like really, that seemed a bit excessive uh, for a mixed non-farm number. But I mean, we had a look up there at 84, but we closed at 45. Now here we are at 45 still. So. Maybe look for for a capitulatory fade through 1930, and then um, next week we have FOMC and CPI, which is like probably the most uh, it's going to be super volatile, most interesting week of the summer. Um, maybe that's your gold. That's your gold finger moment. Gold finger. Um, but for now, you're, you're just watching and waiting. Patience uh, of a python. Let's look at sterling yen. It's a very crowded um, retail trade. This is the most crowded retail trade. They're all short. Which often, um, which often is directionally correct, uh, but the timing is, is well, they force bad timing onto themselves um, by having tight stops and being over leveraged. But this is eventually going to turn. We talked about this one, Dollar Swiss, right? Dollar Swiss at 90 cents was cheap, but the retail people all got too long Dollar Swiss and Dollar Swiss just got stuck. We traded down to 88 on teams, but it was never really going to run away there. But those 200, that 2% move will wipe out most retail people because they're 100 to 1 leveraged. 1% move takes your equity to zero. Um, for any of you out there who are trading retail and listening to this, the leverage is free, I know. But be careful what you wish for, people. I mean, I'm going to dance with the devil uh, in the pale moonlight. You're going to get you're going to get hosed. So, but anyway, um, Sterling Yen, we we're watching. We had this brilliant setup. I guess it was Thursday last week uh, or Wednesday last week. I don't know. It was Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, 
where we sold through 173s. It looked great all the way down to 172.55. Very clean. But then, you know, we got taken back out at break even. Uh, classic break trade. I think a lot of people did not stop out where they should have, which was, you know, 173.05. Um, and here we are. This does not make sense to us. Uh, this will turn. But is it going to turn at 176? Is it going to turn at 177? Who knows? But we are watching this because it, it does look a little bit silly. Sterling yen. Speaking of dollar Swiss, uh, here we are at 91 centimes just doing nothing. Uh, but we have Swiss CPI today. Uh, this comes in light. Euro Swiss is your horse. But you want to keep an eye on 91.50 now. This is like a medium term pivot. Um, and if you are trading dollar Swiss, this is now an important level. We are not trading dollar Swiss, but just pointing it out. Euro Swiss, uh, we talked about it after this bar here, uh, last Tuesday. This thing looks like it's turned. I live in Switzerland. Inflation is not a problem here. Um, and if you believe the script that the central bank and the government is using the Swiss franc to control inflation, which is, by the way, brilliant. Um, you don't have to fuck around with interest rates so much and fuck people up with their mortgages and their credit cards and their loans. Uh, just use your own currency. If you believe that script is true, um, there's room for the Swiss franc to weaken, certainly against the euro, which is what people care most about around here. Um, so is Euro Swiss going to float back up to one? We think it is. Check. Check um, CPI today, 8.30 a.m. Swiss time. Um, not often that we look at Swiss numbers very closely, but today we will be. What else is there? Let's, let's look at Euro. Not doing too much. Trying to turn, but now right back in the middle. The low, as everybody knows, is 106.35. The high was 107.80. Let's call that 150 points. 90 points lower. This is probably about the 61.8% retracement of this little move here. If you look at it on the hourlies. I don't want to draw the fibs because I just don't feel like it. But um, is this going to hover here and turn back higher? I don't know. We do have uh, services, final services PMI today, which usually is not very volatile. But we have U.S. services PMI today, which will be interesting and cause a kerfuffle. Uh, a low one or a miss on this, and Euro heads right back higher. Um, so 4 o'clock today, Swiss time. Let's take a look at that. What else is out there? We spent a lot of time dollar Norway, weirdly, last week. Um, it was a slow turn, uh, but it did eventually turn up here in, that, in, in the 1120s. Um, we're in the same mode here. We will, we are looking to sell stretch highs in dollar Norway. We think Euro Norway has now um, made its own turn. You know, we were dancing up there above 12, which we think is a silly season. Um, and we do like the dollar lower as a trend. And our favorite uh, horse is Dollar Norway. So selling high ones in Dollar Norway, we're still on board with that, even though we harvested last week. Um, we're still looking to re-enter that trade um, somewhere between 11.15 and 11.20. What else? Crypto on its knees. Not really. Crypto's not doing anything. The volatility in crypto is so low. It's crazy. Here's the dailies in Ethereum. Ooh-wee. That is some boring shit. Um, wow. Not much else, really. I mean, we're going to be looking at this Euro-Swiss top side today with the CPI coming coming later on in the morning. Euro -Nor Dollar Norway is not close. Um we think stocks are overextended. You could probably sell high ones in stocks somewhere between uh, 4290 and 4300. And 
Looks like it's a patient start on this Monday post non farms. The technical setups, just the way the charts are set up, um, don't look great. Don't look um, predictable. I say they don't look great. We don't see patterns that we recognize. We don't see obvious places. Like right here is an obvious place. 125.42, not close. In gold, there's some obvious shit at 1986. Um, we don't see the obvious stuff, so we just put the guns down and stay patient. All right, that's all I got. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.